this this road so far it's that um material things and appearances it, it all comes and it's goes and changes vain, yes there it is it's uh it's what's in your heart and it's the way you treat people and um to when you're given much much is expected uh -huh. and i was blessed growing up i had two wonderful parents didn't drink didn't do drugs went to church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, you know, raised Southern Baptist, and I'm grateful for that because I've got that faith to, to draw back on. Right. At that foundation. Um, <clears throat> but uh, I guess I just had a wild hair that I did. Well, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself. I, I did, the, you know, what the Southern girl's supposed to do. I got went to school, got graduated from UNC Charlotte, got married by 21, but still, and then got on a job that was a dream job, Microsoft Corporation, right. the software company. I worked for them for 15 years. I, I was self-driven. I was independent. I was, my mom and daddy, were, they were proud of me. Uh -huh. And then hmm. a little white pill called hydrocodone came along when I had back surgery. I had two herniated discs. Microsoft tried to help me. <clears throat> Went to rehab, outpatient and whatnot. Even tried some boxes way back then. And this was before the opioid crisis. Um, but uh, I just didn't give a flip. And I've used much harsher language than that before, you know. Yeah. When I was sitting on my couch and my husband walks in and tells me that he's getting me, getting, he wants a divorce, that he got another girl pregnant. Mm -hmm. I, I can remember not feeling a damn thing. I was so cold inside. Um, but uh, we had a beautiful home, a beautiful, two beautiful boys, uh, Brandon and Brock. They're 26 and 22 now. Um, 20 years of marriage, and I pushed him away. I, I did that. I take responsibility for that. Why did you push him away? Because I, I didn't want sex anymore. I didn't want to, um, I wasn't suicidal. I've been to the seventh floor a few times though, but I, I didn't, I just didn't care anymore. Mm -hmm. It's like the, the, the will to live or, or just to do anything it was gone. The drugs do that? But it, it, at that point, it was just hydrocodone. Mm -hmm. I never escalated to oxys or roxys or, or panas or anything like that at that point mm -hmm. so finally my, my my family got me into a 30-day program um and um uh, that that seemed to do the trick it was impatient it cost them <laughs> and um but uh i came out of that my, they agreed to let me live in my grandmother's house mm -hmm. but then i met a what i call a bad boyfriend <laughs> He introduced me to crack at 45, mm -hmm. 45 years old, and after that, after that first rock, it was over. Hey, he's doing oh, an interview okay. real quick. I, I want to interview are, are you too. Yeah, you. you oh no. <laughs> I mean, I do. I ain't say no because I'm like. Well, you listen to us, and you'll see where I'm okay. coming from. Okay. And so, two and a half years was all it took to wipe out my 401k, all my gold jewelry. Now, luckily, I had signed over my house. To my husband and the stock account so none of that could be touched mm -hmm. I wanted my boy's lifestyle to stay the same because my husband didn't work he was a stay-at-home dad he mm -hmm. worked at my dad's restaurant on the weekends but he he took care of our boys and he took damn good care of them you know I don't I don't I, I took that for granted at the time Do you still see your your family um my mom and dad passed away mm -hmm. Uh, my sister happens to be here mm -hmm. with me. She's younger, 11 months. I have a younger brother. She's here on the compound or? She's homeless too. Okay. Um, recently. She right. just got out of jail. Um, <clears throat> now my brother, I'm not going to say anything ill about him uh, on tape. <laughs> Let's just say, um, as my uncle Jerry put it, he has met, he has, uh, made off well from my, me and my sister's misfortune right. via life insurance policies that we never got the bulk the rest of and some property that i my name is on but that's neither here nor there what what got me here was um i went to stay with my sister after getting kicked out and uh got introduced to meth and it's been kind of a roller coaster since then you know i love the way it made me feel 
excited young. Was there a space between the hydrocodone and the meth? Oh yeah, yeah. That The hydrocodone was way back, I mean that was like 11, 12 years ago. Mm, so okay. yeah, I've been to detox two or three times. Phoenix knows me well, unfortunately. Mm. But after the bad boyfriend, after crack, I went to a halfway house for women. Spent a year there, Galen's in, in Lincolnton. Mm -hmm. Loved it. I mm. felt at home the minute I got there. And I was clean and sober for three and a half years. Three and a half years. Matter of fact, I was sober when my brother kicked me out of my trailer and turned the power off. I don't want to get into family business, but no. let's just say I was seeing a psychiatrist. I was taking Subutex and Gabapentin. And sometimes may have overdone it and appeared to be drunk, but otherwise I followed his rules to the letter. Right. So that landed me at Wendy's, and then I found out about this place through people at QT. Mm -hmm. You know, I came here, um, and I I have felt I, I went back and forth at first, you know, as to whether I was going to have a tent here or there, and mm -hmm. then I ended up putting up a tent and. Um, I immediately felt drawn to the messages and felt drawn to the, the church. You know, I felt God's presence when I walked in that building. Mm -hmm. And it had been a while since I'd felt that. Even even where I know God is, Dickie Spargo, the, the church where I'm a member at is City Church. And, um, I, guess I could tell by the way you walk down through here, God's dealing with you. Oh, yeah. Uh, he's dealing with me, all right. He's, um. You know he loves you. I do, I do. <laughs> I, I'm trying to not cry as much because I feel like I get lost in, in crying and the emotion, but but I feel it so, so deep. Like, for example, Wendy, I, I didn't even know where she was last night, where she was staying, if she was even okay or not. At, at first, I was so mad at her because she had pissed off a bunch of people around here. I was fine with just let her go. Let her go. But I, in my heart, I felt the Lord say, Dana, you need to go check on your sister. You need to make sure she's at least okay. Hey, yeah, okay. And I did. And I still don't like her very much because she's mean to me. She's hateful to me. She's mean, drunk, and she's got the same issues that I do, but she she wants to point the finger at me. I don't want to point a finger at her. I want us to help each other. Right. we, we got to fix ourselves before we can fix anybody else. But yeah. I really, I, I don't know. I feel like I'm right where I'm supposed to be, whether that's for a couple of days or a couple of weeks, whatever. Um, I'm praying about it and, and waiting for God to open doors or close doors and... Um, it sounds to me like you're you're right. I believe you're probably right. You're where you're supposed to be. And let me say this also. See, you and I, I can have this same kind of conversation with other people, and they'd automatically turn around, throw their hands up there, and walk off. That's how I know God's not dealing with them. Right, right. It's you he's dealing with. Why? Because you can't come just because you choose to come. You come because he's drawing you. And I see God drawing you. I can hear it in your voice. I hear it in your heart. And the Bible says that if you will try me, I will prove myself. And all you have to do is try him, and he will prove himself to you. Not just that he's alive, but he is a provider of those who diligently seek after him. God loves you and knows exactly where you're at. Mm -hmm. And he has provided for me. There have been, I, I've tried to write down, I've got a little black book, those examples specifically of where um i'm out of food stamps i don't know you know me and the cats are going to split a can of buy any sausages i'm going to you know spread as much ketchup on as i can that, so it, that drowns the taste and next thing i know a guy's buying a vape from me and he gives me twenty dollars i can go get something to eat you know that's how god does he does <laughs> That's exactly and, how he does. And I want I want to share that with people. I want people to know that if they if they just have a little faith and God, we, He knows He knows what we what we need. Not always, you know, it's not we don't always get what we want. Um, Thank God. I know, <laughs> but I I kind of barreled. I went through that really really quick. But I I honestly and truly believe the reason I lost. 
you know, the 3,800 square foot house with the pool and the Mercedes and, and, and you know, the beauty. I had what my, some might would say was the perfect life, but I was not happy. And I was not giving back. God had blessed me my entire life. And my parents had set an example. You tithe. The first 10% always goes to the Lord. And me and my husband disagreed. He, he, was, he was a little frugal, not just a little lot. But when you're making six figures, you got it. You got to do give the Lord his due. He yeah. did that for me, you know. Yeah. So here I am. Well, and I, I, <laughs> right, well, that brings us right here. What's your name? Dana. Dana. Where are you from? I am from Gastonia, North Carolina, the south, uh, south New Hope Road, Belmont area. Mm -hmm. You've been here most of your life. All my life. Yes, sir. Tell me about your family. Okay, I have um, mom and dad, uh, also from around, from, well, I guess my dad was from from Virginia. He, um, but, um, let's see. Right. We're, we're, okay, anyway, I have, I have a brother and a sister. They're both younger. My sister's just 11 months younger. My brother's the, the, the wonderful boy, the son that was now finally born, six years younger. <laughs> I'm not bitter at all. <laughs> I got to work on that. Um, I do love my brother. Um, but um, so they, um, both of them had alcoholic parents. Mm -hmm. So they, you know, my parents, there was never any alcohol or drugs in the home. And, and, and I thought that was, that's the way everybody was, you know. I, right. I lived a very sheltered <clears throat> life, very sheltered, because we lived down in the country in Stowe Land. And, and um, Grandma cooked dinner for us on Sunday afternoon after church. And, um, Tight family. Yes, very much so. Christmas, big Christmases, you know, and Thanksgiving. Do you still see your children? Um, yeah, my, my oldest son, Brandon, was living with me um, when I got kicked out and uh but now my younger son when we when I got divorced he went with his dad because mm -hmm. he'd spent more they they're two peas in the pod Brock looks just like his daddy and and Brandon takes a little more after me and my side of the family but my mom um when I had to go back to work after maternity leave she kept him whereas uh Brock was on Mike's hit all the time he went to walmart he went to do i mean he, everywhere he went he had brock with him so, but two beautiful boys and never in trouble never a bit of trouble out of them you say you were with microsoft 15 years <clears throat> yes sir and so they tried to help you with the uh opioids they did they sure did um because one of the things that Microsoft was big on is performance. Right. You can't just perform at 100%. It's got to be 110. Bill right. Bill Gates expects excellence. That's how he's made millions and billions. Right. Um, and so um, I became, at first I started out in technical support, but then I became a team manager. And then after that, I became a group manager. So I was over a group of 50 engineers and, and at the time five team managers. Managed the budget, all that good stuff. Um, so they had invested a lot in me, you know, mm -hmm. over the years. And, and, you know, they wanted, they were doing the right thing. And I, I mean, they tried, they tried. Uh, but um, when you just go to work every day and stare at the computer and don't really do anything and interact, shut your office door and don't do anything, that, that's not, that's not going to get you any, anywhere. What are the, when did you start using opioids? About how old were you? Well, the first time probably um, when I had my, well, no, I had some dental work done early on. I, I, I had pain medication as a teenager, or and even when I had my C-sections when I was, um, let's see, 25 and, and, and 30. Mm -hmm. Never had a problem then. It wasn't until after I had the gastric bypass that it sort of, it felt a lot different when I took them. And rather than feeling groggy or sleepy, which by the way, that's the way they do me now. <laughs> it was just weird. Um, they, um, gosh, I felt like I was King Kong. You know, I could kind of do anything. And uh, Energy. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah. But I was also having some problems after the, the gastric surgery. So 
it was it was hiding some of the, those symptoms, um, specifically that my small intestines had come disconnected, almost disconnected from my stomach. All kinds of problems. They had to open me back up and fix that. And once she did that, everything was flowing better. But I still had the problem with mm -hmm. with, with, the, the with the opioids. Yes, sir. And, and like <clears throat> I said, that was before the opioid crisis. I could get. <laughs> I'm not, I don't mean, it's, I don't, it sounds like bragging, but it's not. I was ordering a different script every week, I, and I would have it FedExed overnight. You know, pay $100, talk to a doctor, boom, they get that script that next day. Next week, same thing. And when they sent me to the pain clinic after a year of, of talking to the, the back doctor, um, the first thing they did was up my, up my, my script. <laughs> I was like, really? Come on, people. <laughs> so I, <clears throat> anyway, it's, it got me here, and God... Uh, it's a path. It's people that I met along the way. Uh, you know, it's it's a it's a journey I needed to take. I feel like. So you had done opioids for 10, 15 years, and then you had a ten year break and well, picked up. No, let's plans. see. Let's see. It was twenty. Okay, it was after I had Brock, so it had been after thir thirty five ish. I think is when I yeah thirty five is when I had the gastric surgery. So within a year or two after that is when I, I really started the opioid problem mm -hmm. um and then so yeah yeah so that's that's why i had such a hard time coming off this <laughs> you know i've thought about that timeline in my head before i guess because i get so stuck on the crack piece of it and i try not to because i still remember yeah it, yeah everybody does i think i remember i remember like first one getting in my truck one day i'd give my life to christ and i'd been serving him for not even a year and i this is you had to be there to see it is i smelt crack blowed in my passenger side window Oh, and oh. I was the only one there oh just no just me in the truck oh no yeah. and I was like holy cow go away I, yeah, I was, <laughs> run, run, I was run. tripping man I was tripping yeah where uh, do you stay um I, I have a tent right through the those woods right there that um we call Sherwood Forest uh -huh. yeah I'm in the process of putting up a new one so you stay here on ground I do yes sir <clears throat> is it easy to get drugs out here <laughs> In oh, the street? Tough question. Um, uh, it is, but let me just say that when I came on the scene, I kind of already had connections. If, right. You know, from. Yeah. yeah. I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> is it dangerous out here? You know, my sister made, really made me think about this hard. I've never been afraid here. I walked through those woods. But, I take that back one night i was out there i was high <laughs> and uh didn't have my flashlight and got turned around and i ended up just falling because i couldn't find my way out of the woods tim ended up coming right along and helps me you know uh, off to my tent and that was that so even i had walked down this street and to qt at all hours of the night two o'clock three o'clock four o'clock by myself mm -hmm. i don't walk down the road with a knife in my hand or anything like that you know I, right. so i i do i i god's with me right I, I really believe that i do and i've even i've even walked through those woods it specifically halloween <laughs> to see if anybody <laughs> was gonna try to scare me you know or throw me out or anything i'm like you know what? God, you got me. I got faith. <laughs> and sure enough. No I, weapon formed against yeah, me. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm... But then... I'll be dirty if somebody didn't jump out from behind the car. <laughs> Scare me to death. I said, you can't do this old woman like that now. I might have a heart condition. <laughs> well, you out here now, how long have you been here? It's been... Uh, it's been four months out here now... I went to my sister's originally August of, well, August made a year. So August of last year, I came and stayed with her and her boyfriend. I stayed with them a little bit, me and my sister, to just not getting along. I ended up moving in with a guy for a little while, but then I came back to stay with my sister because I didn't have anywhere else to go. And 
long story short, I mean, she was kicking me out every other day, and that that's kind of how I ended up at QT, up you know, somewhere. Um, I, to be honest with you, I, I don't, I forget why it was QT. No, I, I know exactly why, because <laughs> when I was, um, when I was using crack, um, one of the times I got out of jail, I went to that QT and I would go in there and I could steal 40s all day long, go in the bathroom, drink them, you know, leave, drink them. But I ended up on the sidewalk one night calling my dad and to come get me and take me to the hospital. So, yeah, um, good how, times. <laughs> how do you make your money now? Um, I get food stamps. Mm -hmm. uh, so I, I use that to eat, um, do some trading. Uh, I have, God has blessed me. I, I don't like cigarettes anymore. I vape, which I forgot my vape is in my bag. But <laughs> <laughs> I did. I didn't realize that I was halfway down here. Um, I go to Cure, the Smokehouse um, Cure up on Franklin Square. Those guys kind of went talking to me, listening a little bit, right, saw my situation. They give them to me. One time I walked away from there and they gave me like 10 vapes. Samples, they are golden. I mean, I just thank the Lord and I pray for them <clears throat> and when I leave there because some of those vapes they cost like 10, 15, oh, yeah. even 20 dollars. You know, making my own nicotine and all. Oh, yeah, yeah. See, I don't like the um, the fruity stuff that my son actually right. introduced me to him. And I, this girl with Cure mixed me up. And this is back when they could do more mixing on their own um, tobacco and the menthol. I like that, but I like that ice and there's a specific spearmint that I really really like I think I'm addicted more to that than I am the nicotine right yeah but anyway yeah so I think <clears throat> how does this lifestyle affect you now well um I mean are you less trusting more so I, I'm I'm definitely I'm definitely less less trusting. One one of the biggest things that I had to get used to was that not not everybody um, has good intentions. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, I was always thinking in the back of my mind, well, what you know, what's really going on here? And 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 so I, I had kind of seen a little bit of that world, you know, at my sister's somewhat. But when you're a single female out here, you know the first thing they think is okay you're you're selling your body mm -hmm. you know and that, that you don't think twice about it i mean i've had guys walk up to me at qt hey you want to make some money <laughs> no mm -hmm. i know not that way i mean you know um yeah i feel like it's the only thing left that i have a value yeah. and so I, I i protect it right right well tell me about your typical day <laughs> is he feeding? I think he's that's, that's food. Eat. Yeah, that's food. That's the, the roll, the call for the, uh, the to eat. A typical wow. Do I have a typical day? Um, <laughs> cause I I I've, I've been trying to get more on a schedule. Pastor Moses and I have talked, and because of my background, um, I'm gonna be trying to reach out to people, uh, see what grants are out there possibly. Bill and Melinda Foundation, since I'm a Microsoft alumni, maybe that might get, you know, a little help if to, to gas on you, but, um, that would I, be nice. I actually, there's a girl that comes here and donates. She just, she takes lists and goes and buys it herself and, and delivers it. We worked at Microsoft back in 91, 92. Mm -hmm. So how, that's no coincidence. She, she's doing cybersecurity from home now. But I knew her then, and, you know, we obviously took very different paths. But she says she's got more money than she can spend. And so she comes here and tries to bless as many people as she can. And she That's does. Good. Oh, she's great. Susie. Susie's great. What is, uh, we're, we're, we're almost done. I'll run okay. through these. That's okay. It's okay. What is your uh, biggest fear out here? My biggest fear? Um is uh i guess um dying alone and the last memory that my sons had of me is she was a junkie
Has your, That's my biggest fear. Has your experience out here caused you to grow up a little bit, change your mind on certain certain issues? Uh, <laughs> certain issues. <laughs> Yeah. Oh boy, that, your, that's a big most, question. <laughs> what's your most important lesson that you've learned out here? God comes first. If you put God first in your life, everything else will fall into place. He will provide for you. He He will show you the way. But you got to put Him first, and you got to stay in His Word, and and, and you you got to listen. One of my issues right now is there's still a lot of noise around. Mm -hmm. You know, um, distractions. Um, that's why I said that about, uh, you know, I'm, I might be here a week. I feel like I, I need to go to the desert for a, a few days. Just wilderness. Wilderness. You know, to knock out all the noise for a little bit. And mm -hmm. so I can really hear God. Because I, I read His Word. And I, I've learned more in the last few years about the Bible than I ever did, you know, and, and growing up. No, no, no slam on my, my Bible, you know, teachers growing up. It's just, it speaks to me now. You know, before I was just, these were just words on the page. I could read them, but it. The word does come. To <laughs> it does. That sounds corny, but it does. No, the word does come to life. It really does. I mean, it's, it is a living word, and I, I can definitely attest to that. <laughs> what is, uh, what's your biggest regret? Um, my mom and I, we were never really close growing up. As soon as I turned eight, 18, yep, as soon as I turned 18 and was able to go off to college, I took off. I hightailed it out of there and I never looked back. I never went back home to stay. Um, and, but, um, when my, her and my dad divorced, I, I sort of, I didn't take dad's side because I was a daddy's girl, you know, mm -hmm. it was all about daddy. And I, I just, there were some things I should have said to my mom and I wanted her to know how, what a strong woman she was and what an example she set for me and that me and Wendy are just like her. <laughs> God love and I see her face every time I look in the mirror. And that's okay now, you know, yeah. I used to hate that, but I take pride in that now. I'll never forget the day I, I said something. I forget what it was. It was a comment I made to my son, and it, like, froze me. I, I realized I was my daddy. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> if you were going to give anybody advice oh. out here or somebody that's looking to come into this particular situation, what would your advice be? Um. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, make sure this is like your last resort, you know. <laughs> I mean, uh, talk with your family. Don't burn any bridges. Um, uh, I've not, I've not talked to my brother, but once in the past nine months. Um, and so I don't even know if he knows that I'm, you know, that I'm here, that I'm living in a tent, mm -hmm. you know, behind this church. Um, my uncle, like my uncle Jerry, who it was my, was my daddy, one of my daddy's older brothers. Um, he's in Mississippi, and he and my sister were always real close. But he's really helped, you know, how, as much as he could being mm -hmm. in Mississippi. Um, we thought about going there you know for the holidays because mm -hmm. uh, um he's got some acreage out there some horses you know it would be that'd be nice it would <laughs> yeah, um but you know what i'm a north carolina girl this is god's country right here i decided on. that i i had the opportunity to go to seattle when i worked at microsoft I, I stayed there for three months and boy i could not wait to get back here because i just people are different there home. beautiful scenery but are you hungry? You want to go eat? <laughs> Appreciate you. No, thank you. I, I feel like I, I I did all the talking, but that, that was that okay. That's what I was wanting. <laughs> okay. Was okay.